Well, you know, the most decorative thing in your home is you, especially if you're wearing a fantastic apron like Joe and I are. And so we're gonna show you how to make this really cool gear apron, right? True, true. Now, I've got, I love tools, and I have a software tool that allows me to take any shape and turn it into a symmetrical design, a kaleidoscope or a pinwheel. So I started out with an inspirational photo, and it was actually this sign that had all those gears on it, and then I kind of cropped in and just got the gears that I'd like, loaded it in the software, and now the cool thing is I can turn this into any kaleidoscope. And over on oh, the it right, totally has like that steampunk look or something I like that. It. It's really industrial and graphic. I and like it. You can always see what you're going to end up with over there on the right hand side. You can move it around. I actually just play with the software sometimes oh, because it's got so some pretty. And look how cool. You never know what you're going to get. That's the cool part of it, right? So. Because I wanted the gear shape on the apron, I looked at the gear itself and I looked for another photo and I found a file that looked like a gear. Now this particular gear has six spokes. So I think it makes sense to create a file that has six or 12 segments. And I can do that right over here by just choosing the type of thing I want, how many segments I'm interested in, that kind of narrows it down. And I knew I wanted a circle. So I'm just gonna do a circle with 12 segments. Because obviously six goes into 12 twice. So then right, and you can out. line it up when we put the gear onto the Perfect. apron. Now, the interesting thing here is although this software can make all kinds of shapes, and you've seen a whole bunch of them in this palette, just because that's the shape you get doesn't mean that's the shape you have to use. Because with an electronic cutting machine, you can cut any shape that you want. So let me show you the finished image. And there it is. Now it's a circle there and I can actually print it out in any size. I've got a large example here and this is printed on heat transfer vinyl. You know what's so cool is I never would have realized this was gears when I first looked at it. I mean obviously I can see them now because I know it's gears, I, but I think when I first looked at it I just thought it was a really cool design, you know? Yeah, and, I, and the cool part here is because it's on heat transfer vinyl it means we can move it to a fabric and adhere it permanently. And in this case we're using heat transfer vinyl for dark fabric. It'll work much better with a cutting machine than HTV heat transfer for vinyl for light fabric. So I've got a smaller one of those. I know I've got a smaller one of those actually right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the mat. And while I'm doing that, I know that you're gonna send me that gear file that you had, right? So that I can actually cut this out, which is pretty cool. So you're gonna send that on over to me and I'm gonna go ahead and just load this into my electronic cutting machine. And the first thing that I wanna do actually is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab that file that you've sent. And now what I think is really cool is just like you said, just cause this is a circle, doesn't mean we're actually gonna end up with a circle. Cause what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna be able to scan in the image and then place that gear so it lines up with those six cylinders, just as you said, or not cylinders, six sides, six pieces, six something like that. Math was never my strong suit. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut that out. So while I am doing the scan here, I think you'll be able to see it on the screen right there. And now I can just go ahead and I can grab that gear and I can place it there. And now if I want, of course, I can zoom way in and the perfectionist in me can take some time to go ahead and play around with it. But you know me, I like to craft wildly and just hang out and it looks fine to me. So I'm just gonna say, okay. Okay, cut and start, and boom, that is gonna cut that gear shape out of that material. Now, while that's cutting, you're gonna show us the next step. So once that's all cut out, this is what you actually have for your piece of vinyl, and we're gonna weed it. And weeding just means taking away the parts that you don't want. And because we kiss cut the vinyl, just cut the very top layer, I'm able to peel away the parts we don't want, and it's going to leave all the rest right on the so backing. So cool. How cool is that? I love it because it's like you suddenly revealing something. It feels like, you know, something from nothing. Even though I know I've done the work somehow, I find weeding to be enormously satisfying because all of a sudden you have this amazing shape. Exactly, exactly. Now I need to get this shape from here over to the fabric. So I've got clear transfer tape. And the best part about clear transfer tape is I can see exactly how to align it to get my whole gear on there. Press that down and 
transfer tape, you know, don't use it once and throw it away. You can use it over and over and over oh, again. Oh, I save mine. That's why I save the backing paper always so that I can use it again and again and again. So I'm gonna peel this off and you can see now parts of the other gear are coming. And this, when you peel it from the back of the mm -hmm. transfer tape, that's called reverse weeding. Oh, cause I was gonna say, I was wondering why you didn't take out all those little pieces before, but now I can see it's actually, in a weird way, it's actually easier to take it out now because instead yep. of burnishing the whole thing, what you did is you just stuck it to the outside and now those other shapes are kind of pulling out pretty easily. Exactly. And anything yeah. that's left, which I can see it is, you can definitely, and I actually sometimes find that what I'll do, may I steal this yes, from you? Yes, go ahead. Is if I see a little crack, I'll bend it, that's the first thing, and then I can usually take my stylus tool, I can get up under there, and I can get out anything else there may be. And the same is true for any other spots you see. One more, that right you want there. One more right there. Oh baby, I'm gonna go right after that one. And again, bending it, that lets the crack come up, and then you can go ahead and you can grab it just like that. Pretty cool. Perfect, perfect. I'm gonna go over and start to apply this to our fabric. Okay, go for it. So now, is there anything we need to know about ironing on uh, onto the fabric. Are there any special things you have to do? Do you have to use a pressing sheet? What are the what are the rules, what Joe? What are the rules? And you know, I'm not very rule based, but <laughs> we want to put your iron on the cotton setting, and then be sure that it's warmed up. So give it a couple of minutes to really warm up. And it's a dry iron, of course. First thing you want to do is just iron your material to make sure there's no wrinkles in it, there's no lumpy bumpies. And actually, that kind of preheats it too, so that it's going onto a warm surface. Now I'm putting the heat transfer vinyl right on there. And a common mistake is I'm so excited, I go ahead and iron right on top and it still has the transfer tape. Oh, I might so have done that before. We wanna be sure that we take the transfer tape off and just leave the vinyl itself. And this can be a little bit tricky um, because it's, it's really sticky and it doesn't wanna come off the transfer tape onto the fabric because the fabric doesn't adhere the vinyl as well as the transfer tape. But with a little bit of working, we're gonna be able to get it off. Now in the meantime, I think we should make a stamp to put on the bottom. Yeah, because if apron. we look at the finished apron for just a second, what you can see is not only is there obviously the gear at the top in the center, but down at the bottom, there's all these beautiful sort of ghosty stamped images. So what I'm gonna be able to do is I'm gonna be able to go ahead and just take off this piece that we cut before, and I'm gonna be able to take this silicone stamp material. Now it has two sides of plastic on it, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove one of the sides. I'm gonna put the side down that I removed the plastic from right against the mat and just press it down with my hands. Then I'm gonna go ahead and open up the machine, and I'm simply gonna load my mat in. The next step is I wanna scan in that stamp material because I wanna make sure that I'm gonna be placing my stamp so it actually cuts, of course, on the stamp material and not somewhere on the mat. So, and the cool thing I think is that you can scan it in and you can actually see the clear material. And if you can't see the clear material, there's a little icon here to allow me to do it. Now, Joe, you're holding that iron down for quite a long time, right? Yeah, you wanna hold it down with both hands and put some of your body weight behind it and spend about 20 seconds in each spot and then don't shift or slide the iron. When we're all done with this 20 second piece, we're gonna lift the iron up vertically, move it to a new spot, back down again for 20 seconds. And I'm doing this on a piece of parchment paper. You could use something like a pillowcase or a thin piece of fabric as well. And if you iron carefully, one of the things that I think is so cool is this is completely, you can put it in your washer, in your dryer, it's durable, all that kind of stuff, right? Absolutely. So I'm just putting in a bigger blade now that I'm cutting my stamp and I've upped my pressure slightly and I'm conserving my stamp material. I've moved my gear right to where I need it to be and I'm gonna go ahead and press start and now we're gonna cut out our stamp. And if you look over here, you can see that we've gone ahead and we have in fact cut out two stamps, one big and one small. So we're just repeating the same design over and over again. Anytime you use repetition, it's one of those design elements that really helps bring the eye around and just really enforces something beautiful and artistic. So think about that. Whenever you have a shape, try to use it multiple times in the same way. So how's it going with the ironing, Joe? I have finished Yay! applying it. Bring it on over. Now, Let's take a peek. We could have done this right on the iron or we actually could do it like this as an applique and then apply it to you something You mean right else. on the apron? Right on the apron. There oh you go. I was thinking, are we ironing something to the iron? That See, got I'm confusing. I'm so not used to ironing. That's my problem. <laughs> That's my problem. You know, the first time I got an iron, it was purely for quilting. I've never ironed my clothes. No. I can't lie. 
So now that we have this on, in this case, a piece of fabric, but your apron as well, we can use your stamps that you're making that match this and stamp right on the fabric. And we can use a fabric paint or just an acrylic paint, apply the paint with a brayer. So the and difference stamp between a fabric paint and acrylic paint, because I think people always wonder about that, is they're actually the same. They're usually both acrylic, but a fabric paint is going to go ahead and be soft and supple uh -huh. after you wash it, whereas an acrylic paint is going to be a little tough. With an apron, for instance, this is painted with fabric paint because it was the whole thing and I wanted it to be soft. But if you're using an acrylic paint, maybe if it's just a small area, I think it's totally fine to just yeah. use that and, and you don't you worry about it. it. You I, it up. You know, you've always got to have a little bit of bling. Actually, I think a gear is kind of a different version of bling because it's metal and it's shiny and it has that whole vibe. Yeah, and you could even put gears inside of all those little dots and combine both worlds. You could. How cool would that You could. Be? And I can see that our stamp is almost done cutting. And as soon as it's done, we can simply, and I, just if you would mind explaining how you got the paint on, that would be great. Well, in this case, I applied a little bit of the paint inside this plastic tray, added it to the brayer, and then put it on the stamp. So you just brayer directly over the stamp, and that's and how you apply, apply it, right it and then there. you can go ahead and, and you can print it. Short little strokes in your paint, so you get the paint evenly across the whole brayer, and then onto your stamp itself, and then either flip that onto the fabric or put the fabric on top of the stamp. And look, look at that. There's our gear stamp. How cool is Pretty that? Pretty cool.